Hi there, hope you're well. In this video, we're going to take a look at three commercially available guide rail hinges for an MFT or MFT alike workbench. Ooh, yeah, I know, I've talked about rail hinges a lot recently, and there's more to come. Um, I've got my hands on a shipping production version of the Bench Dogs rail hinge, which is really lovely. Yeah, there's a couple of slight differences between this and the uh, preview that I did uh, earlier on, uh, and I'll talk about those in a little bit more detail when I get to it. Uh, in the interest of transparency, the Bench Dogs rail hinge was supplied for review by Bench Dogs. Uh, I'm not paid by Bench Dogs to make this video or to say nice things about the product, but I am a Bench Dogs affiliate, so if you use the offer code 10 minute workshop at checkout, you'll get a 5% discount across the board at Bench Dogs UK. I want to thank Ralph at Bench Dogs for extending that offer. So fairly obviously, I did not purchase the Bench Dogs hinge. It was supplied for review. I did purchase the dashboard hinge, which we'll be taking a look at, and also the Festool OEM hinge, which we'll be taking a look at as well. We're going to concentrate mostly on the dashboard and the Bench Dogs hinges because it's important to know what the differences are between them when it comes to chunking down your hard-earned money. But I do want to have a quick look at the Festool hinge as well. Um, <laughs> since I've been going down this DIY MFT route, I have had a number of people saying, what are you trying to hope, what are you hoping to achieve by trying these different rail hinges? <laughs> Clearly they've never used the Festival hinge. Um, or maybe they have and they find it perfectly adequate. Uh, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of detail on, on this simply because it is one of the commercially available hinges and it is actually the least costly of the three. Now the risk is down the obvious, uh, the Festool OEM hinge is relatively costly when you buy it with an MFT attached, uh, but on its own you can actually purchase it as a spare part and it's the only one of these three commercial hinges that you can actually purchase the front and rears separately, the rear hinge assembly and the front guide rail support. So you can actually get the cost down uh, a little bit more if you want to make your own front rail support, for example. However, it's got to be said, this is not a premium feeling product. It is pressed steel and plastic. I'm sure Festool will tell you it's some kind of high grade unobtainium plastic. But the fact is, it's all a little bit, you know, janky feeling and not exactly a premium product that you'd expect from somebody like Festool. Plus, the biggest headache is that it really is designed to only work with Festool's own extrusion on their MFT or MFT3. Uh, with a little bit of light sanding, you can actually get it to work with IKEA's Vidga curtain track, but that produces a few issues of its own. I've talked about those before in previous videos, so I won't go into all those details here. But, uh, as I say, it remains one of the least costly ways of getting into a commercial guard rail hinge with the front and rear rail supports coming in at around about £110, including VAT here in the UK. Prices are fluctuating a little bit, but that does take a, a little while uh, to ship because it comes direct from Germany. One of the biggest niggles with it in, in many ways is that the hinge itself doesn't wear particularly well and it hasn't really had much development over the years. This is the front rail support that I've taken off my MFT 1080, which is about 15 years or so, uh, 15 years or so old. And there is almost no difference at all in terms of the actual construction. Obviously the 15 year old one has a considerable amount of paint and glue spatter on it. But really, there's been no progress in terms of how this is made or what it actually does. And maybe that's fine. Maybe it's perfect, like an old Mercedes estate car. You know, you design it once, you get it dead right, and you never change it again. But in reality, there are some things about the Festool hinge which really bug me, one, one of which is all down to the construction. It really doesn't hold itself very well horizontally uh, as you change the height of the rail, there's a certain amount of slop in there, which means that this doesn't always stay true. And at the front, on the front rail support, this little pin that locates under the guide rail into the T-slot, that's steel, and that wears a little groove in the uh, uh, underside T-slot. And eventually that introduces a certain amount of slop. This basically generated an entire slop stop industry. And to be honest, it, it could be better. It could be better thought through. It is uh, 
efficient, I suppose, in that regard, but it's not a, a great product. And the biggest headache, by and large, with it is that it really is designed for Festool's proprietary extrusion that comes with its MFT, or is also available as a spare part at a much higher price. So anyway, with Festool seemingly content to pedal their pressed steel and plastic affair, uh, and make no real attempt at uh, developing the hinge any further, it seems uh, comes as no surprise to discover that somebody was more interested in capturing some of that more premium market. And the only surprise really is that there are so few companies actually involved in it. This is the first one I came across from Rob Schumacher at Dashboard PWS. It was the first, to the best of my knowledge, the first uh, alternative rail hinge available for Festool and other workbenches. Uh, PWS, Portable Workshop, of course, Dashboard makes an entire range of portable benches, of which the hinge is just part of it. But the hinge is available as a separate entity, and it's a, a very, very nicely made, very, very well-machined, solid hunk of aluminium that attaches to the extrusion on the front of your uh, portable bench and is available for both Festool's own extrusion and what Rob calls regular T-Track, which is basically what I've got on the front side of my bench. Um, works fine with the IKEA curtain track and has a nice solid feel to it with plenty of plate to make you sure that your guide rail is held securely. The dashboard rail hinge is manufactured in the USA and it does ship from the US, which makes it a little bit more expensive for us folks who aren't in the US. It's about $264 for the hinge kit and that translates to about £210. So getting on for twice the price of the Festool OEM hinge, but many times more the quality. However, purchasing it as I did for shipping into the UK here, we do get hit for shipping and uh, import duties. And I paid close to 285 or 287 pounds to have this hinge shipped to me in the UK. That's about $360, so about $100 premium to get this hinge in the UK. Uh, it's a great hinge. It works really well. It is very nicely made and very well machined. It's solid and it does a fantastic job. However, it is the, the most expensive of the three commercially available hinges that we have here today. And so to the latest entrant into the rail hinge market. This is the Benchdogs rail hinge. I talked about this uh, before. Uh, I had the a late prototype version. In fact, let me show you uh, the differences. I've only just got my hands on this one. Um, caught up with Ralph at Bench Dogs last weekend at the Makers Central show. Uh, great to see everybody there. The Bench Dogs hinge system is different in that it fits into the dog holes, in fact, into a special pair of dog holes uh, drilled into an MFT top so it doesn't attach to the extrusion at all. Let me just show you the difference between the prototype that I had before and the shipping version principally principally comes down to the size of the top plate that the hinge attaches to that the <laughs> that the guide rail attaches to excuse me and it's a little bit smaller in the shipping version i think it's about 30 mil 25 to 30 mil off the uh, guide rail plate on the shipping version and oops this just attaches into the dog holes and locks down very tightly. That's a big deal if you're someone who works off a regular MFT top on trestles or on a centipede type, uh, style of support. If you do work on site or in people's houses, um, rail hinges have been sort of beyond you because there was nothing to attach it to, whereas now at least you have that option. It's a very nice system and the shipping item is nicely branded with all the usual bench dogs anodizing. And one of the benefits, one of the real nice things that you can do if you manufacture your own product is pay a little bit of attention to all the all the tactile things, all the things that you touch. The The knobs are all polished stainless steel with this lovely knurled finish on them. Does that make it a better product? Not really, but it means that every time you interact with it, it makes you feel a little bit better. So a very nice, very solid workmanlike hinge, very well made and machined, beautifully finished, and perfect for anybody who just wants to work off an MFT top. So when it comes to fitting the guardrails to the hinges, uh, they all take a broadly similar approach, the Festival and the dashboard hinges use a bar 
that goes into the uh, the T track beneath the central rib. The bench dog hinge uses a couple of uh, stout T bolts. The Festool one is uh, secured with a hex key, so you will need a tool for that, which is less convenient if you change rails regularly. The dashboard and the bench dogs ones are both toolless and just attach with thumb screws from underneath. When it comes to guide rail compatibility, you're pretty much restricted to Festool pattern rails with the Festool hinge, no surprise there. So Festool, Makita, Urba, Titan, Triton, and so on. Uh, the dashboard hinge also includes compatibility with Maffel Bosch and DeWalt, as does the Bench Dogs hinge. Bench Dogs includes the Craig system as well. And all these hinges will, of course, hinge back beyond the 90 degrees, so they will self support themselves without dropping down and whacking you on the head. So that's pretty much the hinges kind of covered. There's not a whole lot more to say about them. But before we go, let's talk about the front rail support. That's an integral part of the hinge system. You've got to have the front rail supported as well. Uh, I think as I mentioned before, the Festival one doesn't exactly cover itself in glory with this little steel pin that wears a, gradually wears a groove in your guide rail introducing slop. Uh, the dashboard hinge, again, very nice, has a solid steel pin which locates quite well. Uh, it does have its own slop stop, so it locates directly into that rather than bearing against the rail, and that seems to work very well. And then the bench dogs hinge has a steel pin that locates very precisely. That pin will change size depending on which uh, rail you purchase the hinge plate for. So that's your three commercial hinge systems that are currently available. Let's do a quick recap. Uh, we've got your Festool OEM hinge system, pressed steel and plastic. It's not exactly a premium product and it only really works with Festool's own rails and Festool's own extrusion. At least it's only designed for that. On the other hand, it is available as a spare part, so it is Bizarrely, the least costly of the three hinge systems at around £110 for the front and rear set. It is the only hinge, uh, commercial hinge, that you can actually purchase as separate front and rears as well. So you could just buy the hinge part if you feel that's a little bit beyond you to try and make something if you're on a tight budget and make your own front rail support. Uh, this is one I threw together recently and more on that in a future video. Um, we've got the dashboard hinge, again, fantastic quality hinge, beautifully made and machined, uh, a wide range of guide rails that it will work with and a wide range of extrusions, but it is the most expensive of the three, especially if you're outside of the US, uh, around £285, $360 I paid for that, to have that shipped to me here in the UK. Great hinge, but on the spendy side. And kind of between those two, we've got the new Bench Dogs Quad MFT hinge system. Again, different to the others in that it works directly off the holes in your MFT rather than the extrusion. So gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, means that anybody working off a top with trestles or a centipede type support can actually have a hinge system. And it works with a wide range of guide rails as well. As always, you pays your money and you takes your choice. If you're working off an MFT slab or an MFT top on trestles, then the Bench Dogs one will be probably be for you. If you're working off a, a real MFT, if you like, and you want to keep your bench surface as clear as possible, then perhaps the dashboard one is the one for you. Or if you're on a tight budget, <laughs> and this is something you don't get to say very often, then the Festool one may well be the one for you. Just bear in mind its restrictions and limitations. But I'm going to call this one done for this week. Thank you so much for taking a look. As I said, just a relatively quick one going through the pros and cons of these because I've talked about 
all these hinges before in a lot of detail and I'll link up all those videos down below. A huge shout out and thank you very much to uh, Ralph at Bench Dogs for letting me have a pre-production version of this and let me get hands on with the uh, actual production version uh, and a big shout out and thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members who've been uh, living with me through this whole journey uh, and also on the journey along making my own DIY rail hinge and front rail support. Uh, more on this in a future video, but I'm going to call this one done for now. Thank you so much for taking a look, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.